welcome to Wide Angle this week, an exercise to make sure all Indian nationals found their name in the National Register of Citizens in Assam has been concluded, but 40 lakh people don't have their names in this register. What does that mean? Now, the NRC, as it's been popularly called, uh, had its genesis in the 1985 Assam Accord signed by the Rajiv Gandhi government uh, and the All Assam Students Union to ensure that no people of Bangladeshi origin were going to be allowed to stay in Assam if they had entered after the 24th of March 1971. What does this register mean for the many Bengali-speaking Assamese, Hindus and Muslims who are there? Some people are saying that this is an exercise to uh, ensure that the minority Muslim population, the Bengali-speaking Muslim population of Assam is further marginalized. Assamese say this is about ensuring that their culture and identity is preserved against an onslaught of the Bengalis. Now, uh, we have with us to discuss this Upamanyu Hazarika, who is a senior advocate in Delhi, uh, Joyita Bhattacharji, who is a researcher at the Observer Research Foundation, my colleague over there, and Praveen Dhonti from Caravan Magazine, all of whom have their own unique perspectives on this uh, very controversial issue right now. Upmani Hazarika, let me start with you because the NRC, the whole rush to ensure that this was being done was uh, set in motion when the Supreme Court intervened and said it must be concluded in a time bound manner. Since 1985, it had kind of been lying in, in limbo. limbo. Yeah. So why now? Oh, well, as you yourself put it, the Supreme Court, it was the Supreme Court's intervention which ensured it. And why is it that you've not had this is the most interesting question of all. Because the migration is something which has been, as the Supreme Court observed in a 2005 judgment, hmm. which set aside the IMDT, has been encouraged by political and religious elements. Political elements because they constitute a solid vote bank for, what, uh, for the Congress party at that point of time. So, which they cons consistently and constantly encourage migration. Now, when we are looking at <coughs> the figures now, because the figures are very important. 40 lakhs, because everybody is playing out with the 40 lakhs and focusing on those 40 lakhs of what is going to happen with those 40 lakhs. But let us get a, if you get a larger picture, what is actually the 40 lakhs figure? In 2001, as of, uh, in two th on 14 July 2004, Sri Prakash Jaiswal, Union Minister of State for Home, UPA, mm -hmm. UPA government, Congress, which supports the Bangladeshis, in fact, they are openly supporting them. He himself said that as of 31st December 2001, there were 50 lakh illegal migrants in Assam, which makes it 20% of our then population of 2.61 crores. In 16th November 2016, Kiren Rijuju gave a figure of 80 lakhs in, uh, in, on the floor of parliament and that is 25% of today's population of 3.2 crores. Now the question is why have all these people allowed, been allowed to stay, perpetuate their stay and then uh, nobody's really gone back. Before I come to that, there's another more important issue. 40 lakhs is a figure which we are looking at post 25 March 71. Now please understand, mm. you are only detecting under the NRC process, migrants who came after 95 March 71 in terms of the Assam Accord. Mm. What was the Assam Accord? We ran a six-year agitation under the extant laws in, in India. The rest of India has a cutoff date of 19 July 1948 for grant of citizenship to migrants from Pakistan, East Pakistan, Bangladesh, mm. whatever. But for Assam, we accommodated under the Assam Accord 23 years of illegal migrants, gave them citizenship, gave them equal rights. After that, the Assam Accord was a promise to the people of Assam that you would identify and deport them, which was not done. Mm. In the last 47 years, less than 3,000 have been sent out. That's another story because the legal safeguards have been erected for them. The IMDT Act came into being. The IMDT Act was in such a manner that today, that <coughs> any foreigner and applicable only to Assam, that if, if you make a, per, a complaint against a particular person that he or she is a right. foreigner, mm. it is for me to prove that. Whereas for the rest of India under the Foreigners Act, it was on the owners on the foreigner. So, I think th there's a bunch of issues and before I bring Joyita in to speak about the Assamese Bengalis like you who are being impacted by this. Praveen, let me talk to you. You, you did a very uh, moving piece in the caravan a uh, few weeks ago, which highlighted the plight of the Bengali speaking Muslims in Assam. Now, um, after the citizenship was, bill was brought into parliament in 2016 and there was this talk about naturalizing refugees of you know Parsi, Hindu, Christian, Sikh uh, origin, there was no mention of the Muslims. 
so this is now being seen as an attempt to further communalize and polarize what should not be essentially a hindu muslim issue for the assamese it was about the assamese versus the bangladeshi but it seems indians, to have indians indians the indians versus the bangladeshi but it seems to have taken on the contours of a communal uh, uh, sort of uh, exercise. Yeah, very much so. Before I uh, get to the point, I wanted to just uh, clear a couple of things. You know, I don't think uh, NRC is mandated by Assam Accord. It's only an interpretation of Assam Accord. Okay. And uh, in 2005, it was brought up and it was brought back to life by a Congress government, which, uh, you know, Ms. Hazarika right. says right. they've been supporting, but they are the ones to bring but this NRC, NRC idea finish, yeah. back to life uh, and then he wrote letters to Manmohan Singh and then you know things followed in 2010 there was a pilot project mm -hmm. uh, you know which was conducted during the uh, 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 Congress government in which uh, uh, you know there were protests from uh, mostly minority groups Bengali uh, origin Muslims and a few people died mm -hmm. which is when the government decided that they, there should be consultation wide consultation okay and then cabinet subcommittee was formed and uh, certain modalities were uh, agreed upon hmm. but uh, you know by the time you know the supreme court took up it, uh, you know the issue in 2014 and the implementation started somehow many of those modalities were either modified or not implemented or new things were uh, you know sort of uh, brought up you know so the inequalities that are built in hmm. the process is what makes the most vulnerable there are i mean it's a hierarchy of uh, you know uh, vulnerabilities. victims vulnerabilities in assam because uh, Mr. Hazarika would uh, tell you, you know, there are hi in highest number of ethnic groups in the in the country are in Assam, you know. Mm. So there are various levels of, uh, you know, uh, vulnerabilities. Mm. But I would consider Bengali Muslims uh, as the most vulnerable. And uh, so these inequities that are built into this NRC system affect them the most. Mm. That was my reading of the situation. Now, yeah, it is the same government now, uh, you know, which brought in uh, the citizenship bill, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is also trying to implement, uh, the you NRC. know, the NRC. Right. You know, people usually talk in very abstract terms about how it is being implemented, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's being monitored by the Supreme Court. It, there are two, you know, judges who are monitoring this, sitting in faraway Delhi. But the implementation on the ground is being, you know, done by the state machinery, like mm -hmm. 50,000 people, you know, and there are not enough people. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, nobody is talking about those uh, things. You know, there are not enough, uh, you know, uh, circle officers or tehsildars to do this verification at the, you know, at the, uh, at the NSK yeah. level. You know what? And school teachers and college teachers have been recruited who have no experience in mm -hmm. this uh, administrative process. Like you are, you are deciding the future of certain citizens, right? right? And these people have no uh, clue about this. And these are part of the same society. You know that obviously. Uh, have been uh, believing in this paranoia of uh, illegal immigration, 5,000 people coming in every day, you know. So, how are they, you know, expected to be, you know, uh, without any bias and expect to, you know, verify these documents without any bias? I mean, those are that, the big questions. Th these like, are the big questions me, I have. Let me bring Joyita into this, Joyita, because you have a unique uh, sort of perspective on this story. You are an Assamese Bengali, you are from the Barak Valley, you, yes. you've been there for centuries, centuries, and yet there are people in your family. Yeah. Um, who have found their names missing from this register. Um, so, that, and that's what makes it like not just a communal problem, it's a larger issue of the Bengali speaking person in Assam versus the Assamese speaking person in Assam. Is that how you see it? A uh, factual correction there. A uh, lot of Assamese people and a lot of large number of families oh, also don't have, they have no, they don't have their names there. Okay. In a, a village close to the airport, at least 500 people in one village who don't found, haven't found their name. Okay. So to say that only Bengalis have been discriminated is per se. Uh, well, uh, let me come, let, 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 let me let have my own that. perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, I would say that one way NRC mm -hmm. is a very positive move mm -hmm. because for decades now we've been suffering whether you were a foreigner or an Indian. So, so you were looked upon with suspicion? Of course mm -hmm. we've been I won't say but they, like always your identity in question and mm -hmm. there there is a thing and that created a lot of tensions in the society. So one way I think with an NRC coming in we will be able to bring that debate closer. Yeah. So that will that will end. Having said so now the processes that are emerging, you know, the, the whole process are having, having and even my family's story, it's like, so there should, I think when the, at least the perception is that it is a Supreme Court which is monitoring the issue hmm. and people have great faith in our judiciary. Hmm. So these kind of anomalies when happens, that really creates a question and the fear. Hmm. And, and then it also raises the question of our governance. Hmm. So I think 
it's the people it is the future of the families future of humanity is concerned and also the faith on our indian union hmm. so there is that and so we have we sh there should have been a proper prepare preparedness proper consultation how to do it how to go forward that was a very important perspective and this is missing in a very very big way hmm. and we can't overlook there is a ethnic angle so even if i am uh, uh somebody from assamese bengali that's how i would i would love to think and uh, and i strongly believe that assam is a very multicultural society hmm. so definitely it also creates some sort of fear among us hmm. and when this thing happens there is always a way of creating some sort of ethnic tension and ethnic divide hmm. and we as a i always like to say the vibrant assamese culture that we have and we are very proud of it that that should not be disturbed and we somewhere you know we feel so mr hazarika let me bring you back in with a question now this is an issue of illegal migration this is an issue of who is an indian and who is not an indian uh india citizenship rights are always a big question because how do you i mean is just somebody who's born in indian territory automatically become a citizen of india or not because these families who have come or even if they've come after 1971 um i mean there are two things one is that they have to prove that they were here before 1971 and the other is those who may have had families after 1971 what happens to them you made the point about how this is not only bengalis uh, uh, assamese bengali hindus who are out of the registry even uh, assamese are lots of people are i have a lot of friends who just don't have their families in it but what is the way forward then because you know what do you do how do you resolve you see, this see this is the whole, which is nobody wanted to resolve it in the first place uh, if if in the last since 71 out of an estimated 80 lakhs 50 lakhs was jaiswal and this one between 50 because mind you the 40 lakhs figure is far short now uh, before i come to uh, the, but uh, also uh, these uh, is questions of 50 lakhs and 80 lakhs illegal i mean these are also these are not there's no there's no uh, all right oh, you want verification numbers. of this number these no? are estimates from government they are right. fair estimates all right let me you see we there are 115 ethnic communities in assam correct about 2 crores the ethnic diversity is something which is unparalleled out of 525 ethnic communities in india 247 in the northeast and 115 in assam alone okay smallest is 3000 with a unique cultural traits language and the like i mean you look at andamanese onges and all those them mm. there are communities of 3000 where only 12 would speak the original language mm. that is that ethnic diversity which deserves to be preserved now how has migration from australia pakistan and bangladesh affected us you look at it because we don't have community wise censuses that's the unfortunate part so everybody is clubbed in a hindu and muslim rubric at the turn of the last century in 1901 the total muslim population in assam was 15 was less than 5% if you look at the figures they'll give you 15% but that was because silet then was uh, which is part of bangladesh was clubbed along with assam so at the turn of the last century at 5% mm -hmm. today in 2011 in 1951 year 24 it has gone up to it was 1971 it was 24.7% in 2011 it is 34 and now projections are that by 2040 they will become the majority so it not is about the, the muslims yes no it is not about the muslims that hmm. precisely because the data please please don't try and i say you don't have community wise censuses hmm. because you don't have community wise but you are taking numbers about their population the rising so yes, that's that because everything who is in ethnic community hmm. that is clubbed because we have indigenous muslims also hmm. which are about 7% correct so if you and indigenous muslims don't consider themselves a part of the bangladeshi muslims or the bengali muslims who come in hmm. the ethnic identity in assam is stronger than the religious identity that's hmm. a very important factor we have not had communal riots since 1947 so to put it in the hindu muslim rubric as the rest of the country is putting is actually a very great Insult to us. Okay. In fact, Gopinath Wardle, our first, our founder, chief prime minister, prime minister, and chief minister, says that this is an import from the rest of India, from East Bengal. This whole communal thing. Hmm. Be that as it may. My point today is because it's put in Hindu-Muslim because we don't have community figures. Figures is why we don't have a breakup. Hmm. But now coming to that, but at the end of the day, by 2040, there are three studies independently which say by 2040, hmm. 47 of 51 indigenous become a minority, including indigenous Hindus and Muslims. Hmm. Let me tell you that. That's one. to now you are coming to oh, where have we therefore now what is the impact on the world because very easy for these figures to say lower assam is turned totally bangladeshi majority middle assam is on its way to becoming that what happens to these communities who have been there they have all been driven away they are homeless now you are talking about refugees from bangladesh they are not they are economic migrants now obviously when you come in pursuit of economic uh, for better economic pursuit you will obviously uh, be at the lower end of the socio economic strata so where is the question of there being refugees 
I mean, this is something, and they, there but has been a deliberate encouragement. Supreme Court in 2005 observed that there is, uh, when it set aside that, uh, that, uh, that there are political and religious elements which encourage migration, Justice Nariman, in his judgment of 17 December 2014, opened it with these words. A prophet is without honor in his own country. For that, substitute the citizens in Assam. That's us. So today, because of this whole, every all of you in India only see it through a very narrow prism, a communal prism, a linguistic communal prism. Okay. You, Jaitan, can, you have to see right. in terms of preserving the uh, rich ethnic diversity we have in Assam. Which is the point Joita was making earlier. So Joita, you want to respond to Mr. Hazarika on this? I think, uh, you know, whether we like it or not, but the narrative is there and there is uh, the ethnic angle to it. We can't overlook it. And I fully ethnic agree. Ethnic and communal angle to it is what we were. Uh, Are you just saying ethnic or I, because I, he's saying there's no communal angle a to communal it? communal angle to it uh, probably, but I will definitely put that there is an ethnic okay. angle to it. Okay. Definitely. And um, because, but. Uh, we can't, even if people are coming as an economic migrant, hmm. you know, we can't overlook because migration is a part and what government of India has done to address these issues because if they are coming, they are coming and we can just drive them. But away. Joita, just to take that point forward, since you do actually research security along the borders yes. and that's your core area yeah. of research. Um, I mean, we are in a neighborhood which has seen all kinds of migration coming into Absolutely. India, whether it is climate refugees, whether it is economic migrants, whether it is conflict refugees Absolutely. from Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, you name it. They, yeah, these yeah. people are coming into all parts of India, Yeah. right? This is a reality. India is signatories to is a signatory to international conventions on refugees as Definitely. well. So what what is the way forward for someone who does research on this? How does the Indian government say that oh, all Rohingya will be deported or or all people who don't have documents after uh, before it, 1971? Where will they go? You know, this is not a solution. This can't be a solution that we will overlook. Because we have to realize this is a reality. Hmm. Even if it is 40 lakh, I can't, okay, even it is 4 lakh people. Hmm. You know, we can't do it like that. It is the humanity is, is, is in question. It is the future of the pe people. And today they have 4 lakhs. The number might grow. Hmm. And so we have to have a plan B option. And I, am, I also find it quite strange why we are not thinking. Because when we are doing this exercise, I would think that on the side by side, we have to think what we do with them. Okay. We really have to think. A lot of people might say that we will send back to Bangladesh, but why should Bangladesh accept? Hmm. Because Bangladesh's line has been that there is no uh, illegal migration from our side. Hmm. And why should we go back? If they say that our economic uh, indicators, human uh, and economic indicators are much better than Bangladesh, uh, much better than Assam. Hmm. So why people will go? Our people are migrating to different parts. So. This is not a solution. We have to find a way out. So, okay, before I come back to you, Praveen, Mr. Hazarika, what, what is the real issue, uh, solution? Because at the end of the day, as Joita is also pointing out, where will these people go? What happens to the people where the NRC is not able to verify? That's one part of it. And the second, we've had neighboring states. Mamta Banerjee has taken on this issue very strongly, uh, saying that you can't just call every Bengali-speaking uh, uh, Indian uh, Bangladeshi just because they may not. We are a country which, you know, documentation at the best of times is hard to come by for a lot of people. That was what Aadhaar was brought in to change and things like that. So. How do you work Just around all these various go. contradictions? Are you ever please understand one thing? It is the indigenous people, the ethnic people who actually don't have documentation. They don't. Please understand this. The migrants who come in are full of documentation. There are fake factories. We produce them in Borpeta, Kharupetia. Incidentally, you may not be aware, but I don't know. I, if you look me up, I was appointed by the Supreme Court as a one-man commission hmm. to do an inspection of the border. I gave in four reports hmm. in 2015. Hmm. You can procure a voter identity card in Bangladesh sitting there get it there and come into India. You have had people, when I went to Karim Ganj, there, the, the district the SP of Karim Ganj told me that someone, because mind you, these borders are all open and porous. Absolutely. I have made an audio visual, I think some of the channels are showing it today because some people have gone to the media. But uh, the person was kidnapped in Karim Ganj, 
taken to Bangladesh, ransom paid there and he, 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 they got him back. Mm. So that it is, it is a hugely porous border. They come in pursuit of economic betterment. Now the point is, who are there for the victims? Okay. All I'm saying is that let the rest of the country take the burden. Yeah, Why should I take the burden? Okay. I have today to born the burden on the way. The fact that I have today been wiped out in lower Assam. Okay. In middle Assam, I'm in the process of getting wiped out. So the rest of the country should take all the right, burden. All right, Mr. Hazarika. Okay, all right. Okay. Praveen, before you respond, and you have every right to respond to Mr. Hazarika right now. My question to you, while I understand and appreciate the the story that you have put together and the documentation that you have uh, done as a part of this, there is some validity in the need for a registry of citizens in the country. You know, whether it is in Assam, whether it is in other parts of the country, we are talking about refugees coming in from different places. Now, yes, there should be some sort of identification or papers or documentation done. So, in its intention, perhaps this is not such a bad thing. Uh, you know, intentions cannot justify, you know, the means or the way it is being practiced. Uh, you know, uh, there was one senior advocate, you know, he's in his 60s and 70s, senior member of uh, Gohati Bar Association, who wrote a letter to, you know, the Chief Justice of India hmm. and everybody else saying, you know, Justice Ranjan Gogoi belongs to Assam. Hmm. You know, he's also monitoring the process hmm. because he's going to come under the purview of the process. Uh, there are concerns. Okay, okay, that is at one level. Uh, NRC office, you know, 50,000 employees, you know, state government machinery, like down to what I said, you know, fill with, you know, uh, Assamese from top to bottom. Okay. Now, we, are, we have like this power structure that is full of Assamese. You know, in 1983, during the height of uh, Assam movement, uh, Indira Gandhi wanted to conduct elections against the wishes of uh, the state, uh, you know, people, most of them. So, the bureaucrat said, we are not going to conduct elections. Hmm. She was forced to bring in, uh, uh, you know, even IAS probationers, they were given life insurance, like, you know, promise of lots of, uh, you know, things and then they were brought into, they conducted elections and they couldn't even complete uh, the exercise everywhere in the state. You know, it's the same bureaucracy now that is implementing uh, this process. I mean, I'm talking about the inbuilt prejudice. Okay, that is one. Unless you bring people from outside, uh, you know, uh, as verification of officials and people conducting this NRC process, there cannot be 100% uh, you know, impartial process. So, okay, okay yeah. another, another very important point that I want to make, you yeah. know, like, uh, you know, he mentioned Justice uh, Nariman's uh, report. So, you know, there is certain, you know, uh, narrative that becomes common sense after a point. I mean, and, and everything gets, uh, you know, reproduced and uh, repeated. You know, uh, there are, uh, you know, electoral politics, you know, fought over, uh, you know, uh, the immigration, we're, uh, immigrant we're vote bank, vote bank politics but across the country. the story doesn't start there. That is not the complete, that's only, that's half truth. The full truth is the, the East Bengal peasant immigrant started coming in 1901. It's under the colonial state when it was East right. Bengal and Golpara districts was part of East Bengal long before Assam, Current Assam or Rahom Kingdom was part of uh, the colonial state. Hmm. We are talking about, you know, immigration within, you know, the colonial That's state. Region, right. Now, you know, you know, people only talk about like immigration as like one-sided process. You know, there have been so many, uh, you know, uh, acts and like, you know, uh, you know, processes in place where they were pushed back. You know, they were pushed back soon after the first uh, Indo-Pakistan Indo war, like, you know, so many people were pushed back and they were again brought back under Nehru, Liaquat Pact and they were made like refugees, you know, there, this, this, this narrative about like how only people are coming in hmm. is entirely wrong. You know, there have been a lot of people, KPS Gill, who was, uh, you know, senior police officer in the state claimed, hmm. he told uh, senior uh, uh, journalist Sanjay Hazarika hmm. that, you know, I pushed back 60,000 plus, you know, from, uh, you know, the district he was heading. Hmm. You know, we are talking about various people, Hiranya Bhattacharya, who was head of the border uh, police at the right. time, he said till 69, we pushed all the immigrants back. Okay, now where are these immigrants okay. coming from? Number one, one more point, yeah. you know, without active collusion of a lot of Assamese, this immigration is not possible. We're talking about corrupt land revenue officers. We're talking about corrupt bureaucrats. We're talking about, you know, coming? all the things that he's talking about is they are impossible because because Muslims are only 3% of the entire, uh, you know, workforce, uh, government workforce. I mean, government has different figures, but independent figures say 3%. Okay, all right. So, so you know, let me, Joyita, let, let me get to, you into to, this. Just to, just to keep beating, uh, you know, these people, you know, in, in stereotypes, you know, fitting them as criminal element, criminalized, communal, this is... This okay, is fine. Really so, Joyita, Mr. Hazarika's contention is this is not about Hindu versus Muslim, this is about Indian versus foreigner. Um, Praveen is making the point that because there are Assamese who are actually monitoring this process, perhaps there is a bias, whether he's right or this is his view. Now, 
you you do research again so when you have elections taking place in different places you have the commonwealth election observers you have un election observers you have third parties who are no role to play in the conflict Absolutely. is there merit in having someone like that conduct the nrc because the nrc per se is a as you said is a valuable exercise Absolutely. so should there be a third third person like I, I mean I suggested people from Tamil Nadu but it could be from anywhere people from you know Afghanistan I don't know see I think uh, so long I would ex ex expect that majority of the people right now it's an if it's an effort uh, to identify or hmm. give a formal aid to Indian citizenship hmm. so it is the citizenship of India and we are looking into registering I would like citizen of India hmm. so we are Indians so if some people, because right now it is a draft, so for 40 lakhs, uh, we can't claim them to be illegal migrants and all. We have to assume that a significant portion hmm. will be uh, Indians. Hmm. And if some of them has this kind of uh, uh, feeling or thinking, and so I think some way it is important to have, uh, to look into uh, to ways and means to understand and to give uh, some sort of relief to their understanding hmm. if they want if it is even or thing might be a, maybe some different uh, maybe within the country hmm. we can think if it is mm, what uh, but right now it is under sub judies so it is the court have to take has the, to decide who will do it so but so, mr hazari yeah, so why I, is that why is there a problem to say that let some third party who has no no interest in the debate i have no know? issues on that in fact uh -huh. if you ask me it was started during the Congress government time. Correct. The Nobody con is no, just a minute, the just, Congress just, of just, just role a minute. Just huh. a minute. What Dhanti said about the so-called ethnic. Now he says that we should not. Therefore, we should have surrendered it. Uh, we should surrender our state to migrants from Bangladesh, like the way Tripura has today. Pe ethnic people have become a minority. We should also in our state no, agree to have those people. No, no, this is this is the see. This is this whole communal prism. Today it's very fashionable for the secular brigade in India to be. You know, uh, I don't want to get into all of that, but hmm. to be so Tripura might be you know offended by your statement. Yeah, whether he is offended or not is not the issue. The point is, it's a fact. I, 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 the point is, today the ethnic people in Tripura who were there hundred years ago and a majority that have been by consistent migration. That's Are one. you denying the fact that Assamese were also, you know, very active in bringing migrants? I you don't know. No, it's a fact. Peasants, it's a fact. I, it's, it's a fact. Even today, you after, know, British, British after, tea you leave, leave aside the uh, present. Even India. today, present the politicians, the political class. The present the political class, the, the politicians who encourage this migration were all Assamese politicians. The bureaucracy, so, Mr. they are all. So, Mr. Hazari, you are saying the no, present day political class is equally culpable. I am saying, yeah, yeah. I so, given I that whether them. it's the Congress, whether it's the BJP who have played this huh. for their own political Asam gain, one Asam second, even they and the BJP and even the BJP, yes, yes. For, for vote bank persons. Correct. So, every political party in Assam, the AGP, that the Congress attractive. and the BJP is playing this whether it is the Assamese, whether it is the Bengalis, whether it is the Bangladeshis, they are all playing them for their political mileage. So, where does, where do people then step out of this this prism, you keep calling it a prism. So, let me also use your terminology. The fact is that you have a situation at hand where you cannot verify a, who says you cannot who, verify? Because if, you, if people like you are also in it, then obviously the verification process why, is not why, going why? well. Why is it not going well? I am, we are not happy with the verification because I will tell you why. Yeah. Um, and it is weighed against us. When he says it is weighed against those poor migrant uh, refugees, hmm. which he calls the poor refugees. Assam Accord was for identification of foreigners. When you identify foreigners, the onus is on that person to give documentation and to prove that you ha he has to prove it uh, uh, before the police or before the tribunal. There are various legal safeguards for them incidentally. There was the IMDT because post NRC those who get excluded, they yeah. have to be adjudicated afresh by a tribunal. Yes. That is one. But you reverse it during the NRC process. What you did was you gave everybody an opportunity to become a citizen. If you are today because they are identifiable, you know which areas they are, you ask them to produce documentation that could have been so done. So now you are saying the problem is with the NRC and the no, list of no, documents is asking say, for? I am not saying that is the problem is the, because the NRC, because nobody did anything, hmm. please do not put words in my mouth. Hmm. I am confused. I am trying no, to understand no, what no, you are saying. Yes. Because the NRC, because nothing was done, was the NRC was uh, evolved as a via media process. And in fact, what he talks about the Barbeta project, the NRC pilot project. Right. Because when he says, because there were problems, what was the problem there? The problem the, was communal clashes yes, at that point in no, time. No, 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 not consulted. No, do you know what? Very interesting. He does not know about it. 
I, I, it's an RTI query. The government then, after they, then they refused to give it. 21st July 2010, a whole horde of uh, AUDF arms and those Congress fellows came and burned down the mm -hmm. DC office. They are, they are identifiable today as Congress leaders. They are there. It's come out on RTI as well. Uh, about three or four people were killed in the police firing for burning, and but they were compensated. 132 were given compensation. RTI query was asked how many of them had 1971 pay appearance in a 1971 electoral rolls. Out of 132 granted compensation, 98 did not. So 98 for so you had foreigners who come to Assam, burn down the district magistrate's office, are compensated. But Mr. Hazarika, in before this 1971, is the government, uh, that's a Congress government RTI query which I they did understand. not give. The NRC has a list of documents that you have to submit, right, right, to prove your your citizenship in India. It does not only talk about electoral rolls before seventy one. It talks about birth certificates. It so talks about land records. It could produce nothing. They may produce nothing. Families. So that's like, why ninety eight. The government itself admits they were foreigners. Why are you holding a brief for them? No, no. The I, government itself admits I they were foreigners. I am not holding a brief for the government. Please don't put words in my mouth. Just so you don't want to put words in your mouth. Do not put words in my mouth. You are saying I am simply asking you a very valid question yes. that you are not able to ascertain whether these 40 lakh people are refugees, are migrants, are Bangladeshis, Bengalis or Assamese. The You're point not is they have to be citizens or non-citizens. That's it. It's not a question. So what is the benchmark for citizenship? Documents. We have 15 documents. You have to prove objective then, criteria. Then I mean are you questioning Joyita's citizenship? Right now? Nobody is questioning. So, yeah. So, so uh, NRC has this uh, list of 14 documents yeah. that you're supposed to, you know, right. submit to become part. So, the the, the most important is 1951 uh, NRC. NRC. They call it NRC, but yeah. you know everybody knows it was just uh, 1951 census uh, rolls that were converted into 1951 NRC. Right. And the census commissioner has said it in uh, the census, uh, you himself. know, uh, himself. He said uh, this was conducted in 20 days. It was not complete. We are talking about 51. We had 47, we get independence, infrastructure was not in place, processes were not right. in place. Everybody knows Assam is prone to floods, it was not conducted in so many districts. Right. It is a half big document which was rejected by Assam uh, Gauhati High Court in 67, all on the record he can check. Uh, now suddenly, you know, by 79 80, 80 to 85, this Assam movement makes it like this, uh, you know, uh, sacrosanct document so in which if you don't have the name, then you are not Assamese. Joyita, I'm going to give you the last word because there's no point getting Mr. Hazarika and uh, Praveen Dhonti in on this right now. I want you to just give us a sense because this is a draft a draft registry that's come out. Uh, clearly, passions are very high around it. Uh, whether they are foreigners or not is yet to be determined. You might well be a foreigner tomorrow and be asked to leave the country. We don't know. Uh, but the uh, Some of my family members are also in Right. Not and there. that's also going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. We go back before probably any of anybody was anywhere else. Before okay. Alright. So then we're going to have to wonder what happens to them as well. I'm yeah. not questioning that's going to be a problem. So the fact is that there are holes in this exercise. So Joyita, what in your opinion is the way forward? You know, uh, first of all, we have to. It is a draft. Uh, so far, uh, the Supreme Court has said that they will they will be given enough chance to prove uh, their thing because now uh, from seventh of August, the process will be that they have to ask why their name is not there. Hmm. Then they have to submit their claims, hmm. and then there will be again analysis and all and the data, and then a lot of them uh, will be included. So we expect that from 40 lakhs, the number will go down s sufficient. The government is giving ample space to yeah. that. And after that, if you're So my question yeah. to you, Joyita, and this is for Joyita, I'm making it very clear over here. What will happen to those who in the final analysis are not going to be on this registry? Do we send them to Bangladesh? Bangladesh says we are not going to take them. Do we send them to all. Myanmar if they are Rohingyas? They don't belong in Myanmar Absolutely. right now clearly. Do we send them to West Bengal? Where does where do they go? Many of them whose families, whose children are born in India Absolutely. carry Indian birth certificates and Indian passports. Absolutely. So what is the answer? You know, I, th I think that is a very big question. So I think the government have to come forward and we have to because overlooking and brushing this issue is not going to be a solution. And so, neither is political uh, rhetoric going to solve anything right now. Neither any of the political right rhetoric. There have to be a rational way of looking into the whole issue. Definitely, this is a big question and we have to see India's stretcher internationally also. We can't overlook these issues. So, there should be a proper 
redressal mechanism, whatever format it may be. Will it be the government? Will it be an international but redressal mechanism? I think uh, since India has adhered to it, I would expect since India wants to do it in an in internal way, so they have to find a way out and there should be from now on only that the government should take it forward and that I would always prefer that since it is a governance issue, the gov uh, the, and India is a democratic uh, country, so it is the democratic government have to take it in a proper way so that these issues because end of the day it is the concern of the humanity and our image internationally also. Right. All right, Joyita. Thanks very much for letting us end on that note. Uh, as Joyita says, it's a question about humanity. It's a question about India's international commitments. It's a question about India's national commitments to democracy and the principles of democracy. Many questions over who is a citizen of India as far as uh, they're uh, concerned, uh, as far as they're, uh, they're being born or not in Assam is concerned, who is not a citizen of India. This is a draft registry and as you can see, it's already uh, evoking really heated passions. So, it is a question of how the government of the day is going to be able to ensure the intentions of this registry do not get conflated with identity politics, with vote bank politics, with communal rhetoric or ethnic conflict in the country. These are big challenges. Let us not take this very lightly. It is a serious issue and I think it will require much more debate and discussion. Thanks very much for watching. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.